Hello everyone, welcome to problem 1.11 of John Thompson's The Modern Approach to Quantum Mechanics. So, this problem is pretty similar to problem 1.10, so if you've done and seen problem 1.10, you're going to be uh, pretty familiar um, with this problem. So really, it's, it's the same problem, just a different state, and it asks us to kind of compare the differences between our answers for this and the answers for problem 1.10. So, our state here, the only difference is on 1.10, the i was on this term, whereas on this state, the i has moved to the one half over here, and it's a minus sign over here. So really, that's the only difference. Um, I think the minus, was it a minus sign on the i? No, it was a positive i on the last state. So this is a minus i now. So um, really, nothing has changed for the z. Uh, the z component here. So the expectation value of the z component, again, is the probability of plus z times h bar over 2 plus the probability of minus z times minus h bar over 2. So you find, to you get the inner product terms for plus z and minus z, um, which just is the components here. So you get minus i over 2, and then you take the probability, the, sorry, you take the magnitude squared to get the probability. So that becomes 1 fourth. Take the inner product of psi and minus z, you get the component uh, root 3 over 2, and then square that, take the magnitude, you get 3 fourths there. So that's pretty simple. Plug those into the equation, you get a fourth times h bar over 2 plus 3 fourths times minus h bar over 2. That gives you uh, h bar over 8 minus 3 h bar over 8, which is minus 2 h bar over 8, which is minus h bar over 4. So <laughs> just do that math in your head. It's pretty simple. Um, that shouldn't be an issue here. So. Um, and that answer is the same from problem 1.10. So now for the x component, we find the inner product of psi and, and plus x. And again, writing plus x in terms of the z basis, um, where we have the raw version of plus x here. So we have 1 over root 2 plus z plus minus z times the state psi. So doing the multiplication here, what you get is a minus i over 2 root 2. Um, the the, the components where you get plus z minus z cancel because that's zero, they're, they're, they go away. And then the last term you get uh, root three over two root two, factoring out um, one over root two, uh, one over two root two, and rewriting one over two root two as root two over four um, by just multiplying by root two over root two. So just, and just factoring that term out, rewriting it, and what you have left inside is uh, root three minus i. Kind of rearranging the terms there. Um, so that's the inner product. Take the magnitude squared of that. What we get here is the magnitude squared of root two over four is one eighth. And then the magnitude squared of this term is you get three, you get a minus i, um, and then I'll, sorry, you, get, you get three, you get a plus i because when you take the magnitude squared of a complex number, you flip the sign on the other term, so that's a plus i when you when you multiply. So the inner terms cancel, and then you just get a one when you multiply a minus i and plus i. Just kind of doing that in my head, but you know if you need to write that out on paper, go ahead and just fully write that out just to verify. But you get one eighth times one plus three, which is four, so you get four over eight, which is a half. And then again. We don't have to go through this whole process again for minus x. Just take one and subtract the probability you get for plus x. So one minus a half is a half. So that's the probability for minus x. And then plug those probabilities into the expectation value equation. And you get a half times h bar over two plus one half times minus h bar over two gives us h bar over four minus h bar over four, which is zero. So um, in problem 1.10, the expectation value for y was zero. And this problem, the expectation value for x is now zero. So my prediction is that the expectation value for y is gonna be what the expectation value was for x in 1.10, um, since they've swapped here. So let's do y now. So we have one over two um, times plus c, minus i times minus c, that's plus y uh, in the bra form. So taking that state and multiplying it by our psi state, um, what we get is minus i over 2 root 2, minus i root 3 over 2 root 2, and that's equal to minus i root 2 over 4, 
uh, by factoring out a minus i over two root two, and then one over two root two is the same as root two over four. So that's how I have to simplify that. And then when you factor it out, you're left with a one plus root three. So that's the inner product. Take that term, take the magnitude and square it. And this is a complex number, so you're gonna flip the i on the other term when you do this. So ultimately this, this term here becomes a one eighth. And then one plus root three becomes one plus two root three plus three when you square it. Oops. And that becomes one eighth times four plus two root three, because one plus three is four. And then multiplying the one eighth through, you get one half plus root three over four, uh, because four over eight is half, and two over four is uh, two over eight is one fourth. So this is our probability for plus y. So again. We, it's a two-state system, so we had the probability for plus y. Subtract it from one, you get the minus y. So one minus one half minus root three over four. Um, so the one minus one half is just a half. So all we have is one half minus root three over four. And then plugging in these probabilities into the uh, expectation value equation, we get one half plus root three over four times h bar over two, plus one half minus root three over four, which is this term, times minus h bar over two. And now it's just a uh, simple, simple algebra here. So we get uh, h bar over four, root three h bar over eight. We get minus h bar over four, get a plus root three h bar over eight. The h bar over four is canceled to zero. And you get two root three h bar over eight, which simplifies to root three h bar over four. So that is what we got for the probability for, for the expectation value of x and from 1.10. So basically, the result of moving the i over here is that the expectation values for y and x swapped. Um, but yeah, that's it. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I will answer them. And yeah, I will see you guys in problem 1.11, or sorry, 1.12.